Anto? AJ, what actually happens in your soul <coughs> with the error when God's love, how do, does it transform the error itself or does the error leave you? No, this is the third aspect of our situation. The error can't leave us unless we have the third thing in operation. Truth doesn't have the effect of forcing the error out of us and love can only enter us once the error has gone. So there needs to be a third component that allows the error to leave. What's the third component? It's humility. humility. So to be humble. What does to be humble mean? It means to have a passionate... Longing or desire to feel every belief and emotion within ourselves. whether it is painful or pleasurable. Many of us have just as much problem with pleasure as we do with pain. Right? No matter oops. what anybody else feels about it. A lot of us are all right with the first bit or semi all right with the first bit. But when it comes to this, no matter what anybody else thinks about it, then we just throw up our hands because we're constantly worried about what everybody else thinks of it. But let's add to it in a different colour. I just wanted to add, it means to see ourselves emotionally as God sees us. So in other words, we, once we were truly humble, we would have exactly the same opinion of ourselves as God has of us. On every subject. So anything personal that you could ever think of, we would eventually, if we were truly humble, we'd get to the point where we see absolutely everything about ourselves the way God sees it. And to be frank with you, most of us have a terrible opinion of ourselves. Right? An opinion of ourselves that is like, when we compare it with God's opinion of us, like God sees us as the pinnacle of his creation, and we see ourselves as the dirt of his creation. <laughs> That's how much different it is for many of us. We see this huge gap between how we see ourselves and how God sees us. Or conversely, some of us see ourselves as this brilliant individual when God sees oh, a lot of this darkness that's inside of our soul that we're just in total ignorance of. And it means to see ourselves emotionally, not just intellectually. So it's not like going in the mirror and saying, yeah, you've got a bit of a wart on your face there. I wonder what that is about. It's not like seeing yourself physically. It's actually feeling the condition that you see inside of yourself, which is very, very different than intellectually analysing the condition. Right. Now... That is a basic description of the way. And let's summarise what each thing does. God's love enters and transforms our soul. God's truth opens our soul ready to be transformed. And 
Our own humility allows the error to leave. Can you see the relationship between each thing? So this one transforms our soul, this one opens our soul ready for the transformation if we allow it. But this one pre prevents or allows, depending on our openness to humility, prevents or allows the error to leave. Right? And even the truth to be accepted as well, of course, as a, as a part of that, both things it allows. So you could say that a lot about the gate, if you like, is about this quality of humility. Can you see that? Entering the gate means entering this quality of humility. And for, for many of us, we're still struggling with that quality of humility because it's not an intellectual place. It's an emotional place. It's not a place that you can make out you have in your mind. It's a place you either have or have not, depending on your condition in your soul. And so what, what we've got to do is look at these qualities, each one of them, we'll look at each one of these things in terms of what they do. Now, I've often said to you that the path to God or the way to God is very easy to understand. It's simple to understand. But it's not easy to follow. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called it the narrow gate and cramped is the way leading to life. Can you see? So it's not going to be easy to follow, but it is simple to understand. The broad path leading off to the soul's destruction in most cases, or to the soul's stagnation in others, that path is often very complex and complicated. So it's not simple to understand, but it seems to be easier to do. And like That's what, why we embrace it. That's why most of humanity embraces it. So you know how humanity has created religion after religion after religion after religion. And I think now there's something like seven and a half million, seven and a half, sorry, thousand religions on the planet. And I think there's something like, you know, 20 or 30 primary religions on the planet and seven and a half thousand other religious forms on the planet. The reason why we create all of those things is because we're all trying to invent a way we get to God because we don't want to accept God's way. <laughs> That's why we do it. Huh? And that way the, we invent ranges from atheism to agnosticism right the way through to being a devout Catholic or Buddhist or, or Muslim. All the way through that range is all the way man has invented in order to understand his presence in the universe but it's still not God's way to be humble means that we are going to at some point accept God's way in our emotional condition in other words we're no longer focused on just defining our way by ourselves or making sure that we feel our own way as truth but rather we now feel God's way is truth. Does that make sense? There's a big difference between those two states. So, is everyone okay with the basics of the way? You've heard them many times, yes, for many of you. And if you haven't, there's a whole introductory set of pack of DVDs up the back there you can take with you, which will basically present those three things. The longing for divine love, the longing for divine truth, and humility as the different parts of the way.